All right, let's take a look at our second definition for rate of change and slope of tangent line to a curve. Now, just as a caveat, this is really just another way of writing our first definition. So our first definition took a limit as Q approached P on a tangent line. So we were taking a secant line and we were making it approach a tangent line to a curve at a point P. And we just used the notation a f of a, and then we looked at another point and called it x f of x, and let x approach a. Now, we're going to just do a slight little change on our notation. So let's just come over here. Here's our function. If we want the slope of this tangent line at p, so let's draw in our tangent line at p. If we want the slope of our tangent line right here, remember tangent means we're just going to touch the curve. So if we want the slope of this tangent line, and actually more importantly, we tend to want the actual equation of the tangent line, but let's focus in on uh, the slope here for just a second because that's the part we're going to have to use a limit to find because one point is not enough to find a slope. You need two points. So you have to look at another point and we call it Q. Now, if you're following along and taking notes, um, I'm just going to do what we did last time first. So maybe just watch for a second. This is x, f of x is what we did last time. We said let's look at another point, call it q, look at the secant line through the points p and q, because if you have two points on a line, you can find the slope. Look at that slope, and then march Q closer and closer and closer to P. So we had called this point Q over here X, F of X, and, and then we said let's just let X approach A. So, so just as a reminder, definition 1, and let's keep it over here, um, definition 1, our first definition for the slope of this tangent line, this instantaneous rate of change, our first definition said this. It said that the slope of the tangent line was the limit as x approached, this was definition one, uh, the limit as x approached a of this slope between Q, p and q, which is difference in the y's, f of x minus f of a, over x minus a. So that's just a review from the previous video. Now let's say we're going to change things up a little bit, and this time, rather, we're still going to look at it in very much the same way. This is our secant line label that secant. So here's our secant line. And so now we're going to have a definition. And I'm going to write this one in red. This is our new definition. So our new definition, we call it definition two. Um, and we say the slope of the tangent line. This time we're going to do just a slight adjustment here. We're going to say rather than calling this just generically x, we're going to talk about the distance between uh, P and Q on the x-axis, we're going to call this H. And therefore, this point here is going to be A plus H. Okay? So we're going to talk about that length right there being H. And uh, then that makes this point Q up here, rather than just X, F of X, it actually makes it A plus H is the X value, and then F of A plus H. And I should have. We could call our function anything we want, but we're gonna we're calling it f of x in this scenario. X axis, y axis. Okay, so the slope of our tangent line now becomes the limit as rather than saying x approaches a, this actually goes to zero. We're gonna as we bring this point in closer, right? We need to to find the slope of the tangent line, we need to bring Q closer to P. So we have to make A plus H get closer to A. Well, the easiest way to do that is to let H go to zero. And so our slope of our tangent line becomes the limit of the slope between those two points, which is the difference in the Y's, A plus H minus F of A, all over A plus H minus A. Well, look at what happens when we take a plus h minus a. The a's, of course, cancel, and that is just h. Okay? And we're letting h, we're taking the limit of that slope as h goes to 0. And there is our new definition for the slope of a tangent line or the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a point p, uh, defined as a f of a. Now, just for clarification, because we do have definition one, definition two in this in this 
calculus textbook that we're using, um, definition two is labeled as such and definition one as we have here on the screen. Um, but just for clarification, I tend to say, you know, this to remind us the difference here, this is the definition of the slope of the tangent line as h goes to zero and definition one is the slope as x approaches a. Okay. Now we're doing the same thing, so don't, don't think these are two totally separate definitions. We're doing the same thing. We're really just relabeling the point Q, and then that gives us a slightly different variation on this limit. All right, so there is where it comes from, and here it is in typed up form. And so if you want to freeze the screen here, pause, pause the video and take some notes here, this is the official definition, the average rate of change when we're talking about average rate of change, that's the slope of the secant line. Okay? And so remember, slopes are rates of change. So always kind of referencing those two things. We take an average rate of change and turn it into an instantaneous rate of change, a slope right at a single point rather than between two points. And so the instantaneous rate of change or the slope of that tangent line to a curve in this definition is the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h goes to zero. And again, uh, we'll spend more time on this, um, but for now, we'll add in the caveat. It has to, of course, like this, this is when this limit exists. If this limit doesn't exist, we have to talk about what that means. Um, but for now, we're going to work with this limit and practice this. Then I took, uh, took it just a little bit further. Of course, like if we're looking for an actual equation of a tangent line, use some algebra. This piece is some algebra. Okay? This is coming out of algebra, writing lines. Okay? So if you actually want the full equation of the line, then you take the slope and you take it a little bit further and find the full equation of the line. Okay, so we are going to spend some time looking at a couple examples of finding slopes and equations of tangent lines with this definition. All right, so for these next two examples, I want to use our second definition. So we want to use the definition. The definition is h goes to zero. So um, sometimes you'll, it'll be specific which of the definitions you need to use, uh, and others times you get to pick. Okay, they're both. Um, equally valid definitions, so you can choose which ones you want to use sometimes. But um, I also want to make sure that you know both definitions and can use both definitions. So for these examples, I want to specifically use the second definition that we've just defined. So if we want to find the equation of a tangent line, okay, not just the slope of the tangent line, but the full equation of the tangent line, we have to start by finding the slope and then use some algebra to find the equation and put it into slope-intercept form. So We've got this function, it's a parabola, and we want to figure out what is the slope first of the tangent line at this specific point, negative 1, 10. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find the slope. Okay? So we've got to find the slope. And to find the slope of a tangent line, we have to use some calculus. We have to use this limit. So we're going to use, and I'll just rewrite it, um, I'll just rewrite it here, since we don't have the we don't have the screen up right now, hopefully you have it in your notes, but we are going to use the second definition limit as uh, limit of the slopes of the secant lines as h goes to zero and the slopes of the secant lines will be a plus h minus f of a all over h. h being the distance on the x-axis between our two points p and q that make up our secant lines. Okay, this by the way is our a and this is our f of a value. We're given those points. We were, we're, we're at a very specific point, okay? so we're asking it for some generic point. And so we're going to take the slope of the tangent line is going to be the limit of f of negative 1 plus h minus f of negative 1. I'll write it all the way out. We do know that f of negative 1 is 10, by the way, so we could plug that in. If we didn't know that, then we just plug it in up here, right? We just take f of negative 1 and dot, dot, dot. We figure out that it would be 10, so we could plug that in right there. Okay, over h as h approaches 0. And now to do some algebra. So we're going to plug in negative 1 plus h into our function, and it's 2 times negative 1 plus h squared minus 7 times negative 1 plus h plus 1. Expand that out. 
minus, and we do know that this f of negative 1 is actually equal to 10. That comes from right there in that ordered pair, but again, easy enough to find it if we didn't already have it given as an ordered pair. And this is all over h. And I just need to simplify this out now. And so we've got 2 times 1 minus 2h plus h squared plus 7 minus 7h seven plus 1 minus 10. Track my parentheses there. All right. Keep it moving. Uh, so this will be 2 minus 4h plus 2h squared plus 7 minus 7h seven plus 1 minus 10 all over h. And I notice right here that this part simplifies actually a 2 plus a 7 uh, plus a 1. Well, we'll write it on the next line. We're going to have a 10. So we have 10 minus 11h plus 2h squared. Let me make sure I tracked everything there. Got those. Yep. Minus 10 over h. Of course, the 10s cancel. And that's convenient because then I also have a common factor of h. So I could pull out an h and then I've got minus 11 plus 2h over h. And then my h's cancel. And I end up with the limit of negative 11 plus 2h. And I didn't even talk about it at the very beginning. Uh, we could have right up here, uh, we could have tried to plug in our h right there, um, and we would have ended up with a 0 over 0. So I just went right into the simplification. I didn't even pause for a second to do direct substitution. But I am going to do direct substitution right now, because when I plug in h equals 0 right here, I get the limit of negative 11. And that is the slope of my tangent line. So always remembering when we're taking this limit, we are finding the slope of the tangent line. So we have the slope of the tangent line. Now I just have to do a little bit of algebra and I need to find the equation of the tangent line. So now I just go and I, if, if asked, now I take it a little further and I find the equation of tangent line. And we have the slope, so, and we have a point, so we know the slope is negative 11 and it's passing through negative 1 uh, 10 negative 1 10 so I'm just gonna go ahead and again uh, find we've talked about this in previous examples but use whichever method you want to to find your slope of uh, to find your equation of your tangent line once you have your slope I'm gunna use for this example I'm just gonna use the slope intercept form and I'm gonna plug that point in uh, so this would be 10 equals negative 11 times negative 1 plus b. And so uh, that's 11 plus b. So b is negative 1. And my equation then, fully write it, negative 11x minus 1. And there is the equation of the tangent line at negative 1, 10. And there's our answer. Uh, pretty steep negative slope. We didn't actually graph this one, uh, but we could pretty easily pop it um, into, well, it's a parabola, but we could pop it into some graphing software, Desmo something, graphing calculator, and we could see, um, we could see that slope at that point. Okay, so there, let me get it all up on the screen. So if you want to, you could freeze, freeze that and take some notes. All right. Let's do one more example in this video before we wrap it up. So let's take a look at a root function. So let's do this. Same thing, I want to use the h going to 0 definition. So um, still use the h go to, going to 0 definition to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at x equals 2. And so first thing that we're going to need to do is find the slope. So we're going to find 
the slope of the tangent. And just as a reminder, I'll write it one more time. Um, we're using g, so I'll go ahead and use g here. g of a plus h minus g of a uh, all over h. So that slope of that secant line as h goes to zero, taking a limit of a slope of a secant line as h goes to zero. And in this case, this is our a. This is x equals a. a is 2. Okay. So this is going to be the limit of the square root of 5 times 2 plus h minus 1 under the root minus the square root. Now I don't have, by the way, I didn't have an ordered pair here. Um, I only had the value of x. I only had the a value. So I could pretty easily find it. Um, we'll fill that in in just a second, but just in the notation, right? Like it's just g of 2. So I just plug that in 5 times 2 minus 1, and that's all over h. So if you're not given the full ordered pair, just the a value, just plug it in to find the, the corresponding y value of a, um, g of a value. So if we plug in 2 into here, we get the square root of 10 minus 1. That's the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's uh, this, this is the square root of 9, which of course is just 3. So we'll plug that in. Um, I don't know why I went with, I'm going to switch this into black. Makes it a little easier to work with. Okay, so slope of our tangent line, so we keep going here. This is the limit of the square root of 5 times 2 plus h. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and sim simplify as we go. So this is 10 plus 5h minus 1 minus the square root of 9, which is 3. Did that right up above and forgot. Um, and then this is the limit of the square root of 9 plus 5h minus 3 over h. Now, if I were to try direct substitution right now, right, plug in the 0 for h, I would get the square root of 9, so 3 might, I would get 0 over 0, which remember means do some more work. Right? Always means just do more work when we're taking limits. So now that we're in the section, we're actually applying what we know about limits to find these slopes, these rates of change. Okay? And so when we get to this point, now we, we go back to all of our limit knowledge and we say, what could we do here? And in this particular case with the roots, what we're going to want to do is multiply by the conjugate. So we've got the square root of 9 plus 5h minus 3. Multiple, when you've got a root in an expression with two terms, when you multiply by the conjugate, it simplifies things down pretty nicely. So let's see what might happen if we multiply by the conjugate. The square root of 9 plus 5h plus 3 rather than minus 3. And what I do on the top, I can't change when I'm looking for this limit, I can't change the expression. I can only algebraically simplify or manipulate it. So that's what we're going to do here. So this is going to be now the limit. Um, when I expand this out in the top, I'm going to get 9 plus 5h. Those two middle terms from the conjugate will cancel, and I'll have minus 9. Now on the bottom, um, I still bring my limit as we're letting h go to 0 here in this limit. In the bottom, I'm still going to have h times, and then that whole conjugate, 9 plus 5h plus 3. Okay. And that simplifies down nicely in the top uh, because our 9s will cancel. And we'll just have 5h over h times the square root of 9 plus 5h plus 3. Now notice here, common factor of h will cancel, okay, and we are almost finished here because at this point I am going to be able to take a limit because now I can do that direct substitution, let h go to 0, and notice what happens, 5 over the square root of 9 plus 3, and the slope of my tangent line is going to be 5, 6. So the slope of my tangent line is 5, 6. 
And just to wrap it up, we wanted not just the slope of the tangent line, but we wanted the equation of the tangent line. And so to find the equation of the tangent line, we know we have a slope of 5, 6, and we know that the point that we pass through um, is the point we're looking for that tangent line at was at, here it is up here. So it's at 2, 3. Again, remember we were only given 2, but we plugged in 2 into the function to find that the point was at 2, 3. So we know we're at 2, 3, and we can just plug that into, you can use any, um, again, any techniques you want to find the equation of the tangent line. On the last one, I use the um, point slope formula. No, I'm sorry, I use the slope intercept formula. So let's use point slope here. So we'll go y minus three equals five, six times x minus two. And then this will be y minus three, five, six x minus, uh, what are we gonna have here? Five thirds, um, and then we'll add three. So y is five, six x. Um, when we add three, Uh, that would be um, minus four ninths. So we get minus five thirds plus nine thirds, and so then we're going to have a positive four thirds. And there's our equation. Of our tangent line, our full equation of our tangent line, we found not only the slope, not just not only that instantaneous rate of change, but we also found the full equation. And so there we go. And if we were to have graphed this, this root function, and look at it at that point uh, two thirds, what we would find is that we have a line that has a positive slope, right, a slope of up five over six, five six, um, and a y-intercept of four thirds. But um, we're going we're gonna to focus quite a bit on what that, that actual slope is um, and what that means. That's that instantaneous rate of change on this curve right at 2, 3.